the topic of apologies, I suppose I might as well get this one out of the way and just do one more. Do you guys remember Homer Moore? Does Homer Moore at all ring a bell to you? Homer Moore was about five foot ten, fought at 205 pounds, sometimes on the regional circuit, and that was in the UFC, sometimes on the regional circuit, he would even go fight at heavyweight. He was a lifelong wrestler, very nice guy, I knew Homer for a very long time, but I then went and fought Homer. And Homer was a bit of a knucklehead. I, I fly out to Rumble on the Rock. To, I'd known him for a meaningful period of time just through the wrestling world. I don't know if I'd ever met him or just knew of him. We saw each other, however that worked. But go out to Rumble on the Rock, which was a promotion that was being promoted by BJ Penn and BJ Penn's family. And they were very successful. I mean, they would do, they'd do five and 6,000 live attendance seats out in Hawaii. So if you could get on the cards, you even got to go out to Hawaii, make a little trip of it. I get called on Christmas Day to come out there three days later and fight Homer Moore on December 28th. Okay, great. So I take the fight. The fight's at 205 pounds. Now, back then, I you know I didn't even weigh 205 pounds, but I, I like to fight at the weight. I, I didn't really love cutting weight. Not totally relevant to the story, other than when we get there, the very first thing that we do is the weigh-in. And the weigh-in takes place at a dinner. There's like this big meet and greet. I remember they had fettuccine and they had chicken and they had vegetables. It was a really good dinner. I did not partake in it, though, because the weigh-in was going to happen right after the dinner, right there in the same facility. You have your dinner and then you get up and go weigh-in. They should have done it in reverse order, but just accept the store for what it was. Well, I'm watching Homer. Homer's pigging out. So when it's time to weigh in, he misses weight by eight pounds. And he tells me after he misses by eight pounds. Now, we're the main event, by the way. The show is tomorrow, by the way. And we're in Hawaii. What do you think I'm going to say when they say, Chael, do you still accept the fight? Of course I accept the fight. Here we are. He says to me, though, in a very nice and passive, Homer was one of those big old monster guys, but he had that, like, that really soft and friendly voice. Like just that really, the voice that didn't fit the body. It was like this really nice voice. And he says, yeah, I just, you know, with the holidays, I didn't feel like cutting. I go, well, yeah, Homer, no, no kidding. Including the last 20 minutes when I watched you scarf down that fettuccine Alfredo that looked delicious that I wish I would have had, but I didn't because here we are to weigh in upon the agreed upon class. At any rate, we go out and compete. We have our little fight. I beat Homer. Not the point of the story. Pat on the back for me. Okay, great. But now I'm involved with his career. He went on into the UFC, or possibly had even done this first. My, my timeline might be off, but he fought my teammate, Evan Tanner. I think that was after I fought him. Maybe it was before I fought him. And somewhere along the way, we were always told about Homer Moore. We were always told, hey, you know, be careful of that guy. There was these rumors out there about him. These, uh, from what I knew of the guy, the guy was a gentleman. Good competitor, worked hard, and was a nice guy. From what I knew about him. But you always heard these rumors about, hey, be careful. Guy runs with a bad crowd. That's, that, that's a rough guy. Stay away from Homer. You know, he lives out in Arizona. The people, people in his neighborhood, they know. They know that's a dangerous guy. I don't, I don't really know where that's coming from, but okay, fair enough. Well, one day, Homer Moore gets cuffed up by the FBI. They had been running an investigation on him for over a decade or right at a decade. And he had done a murder. And they had the whole thing. I mean, they had him on tape. He, he, he like killed somebody and put him in the trunk and drove the car somewhere and let the, let the whole trunk on fire. Very dark. I don't mean to go dark, but I... I have to tell you the story. They've got him on tape buying the gasoline. They, they've got credit cards, receipts. They got his, I mean, they got the whole bit, right? Homer's done. So they, were, they spent a decade, though, and that's where these rumors came from. The rumors everybody was talking about is, hey, this guy's about to go down on a big federal charge here. So finally he does. They cuff him up. They put him away. Where's my apology coming from? Well, when that happened roughly a year ago, I spoke on this. I told the exact same story that I just told right now. Lay out, fade to black, roll the credits, wrap the show. Eh, not so fast. They had old Homer locked up, and they had him locked up for about three months. They let him out. They didn't let him out on a technicality. They let him out because they found out he was innocent. Everything I took, credit card, the signatures, the video of him buying the, everything. Wrong guy. Wrong guy. Not only was Homer innocent, they found the rightful perpetrator, and he is now doing time. 
I don't know that there's anything worse you could say than a guy did a horrific crime like that without coming out and correcting it, but I was only as good as the information I was given, and I was given it by the feds. So I think if we're on the topic of telling stories and we're on the theme of giving apologies, I think we all owe one. Well, okay, we all owe one. Now I'm trying to bring you guys on. I owe one to Homer. <laughs>